girl in the ring, you know. Was she? Yeah. Was she? Yeah. Yeah, I was loner. really a bit of a loner. A bit of a loner. Yeah, a bit of a loner. I don't know why, because she's Gemini like me. I'm a Gemini Linda's too. A Gemini. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Her, her birthday's the day before mine. So there's six of us in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We're on, you know. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> so I'd best tell you, you know, before you say something that you regret. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, Janice, you was born over Ardwick Way. Yeah. Right. So, how have you. What, where did you grow up? Cheltenham Medlock. Yeah. So back of the electricity board. Do you remember High Street Baths? Yeah. And then at the back of there oh, was yes, Baths the Road. Yeah. yeah. And, and the electric board. So, yeah, there. So how have you migrated from there to Moss Side and to the arena? It wasn't far. No, it's not far. But it is in a way. Well, my sister was married to a Jamaican. So she introduced me to parties. <laughs> she, she, she would kill me if she knew I was saying this now but yeah not necessarily Shabines but Blues mm. yeah um, I think the first place I went to but I think it was in Old Trafford not my side was the Ben Wima do you remember the Ben Wima no. Tommy Smith had it remember, do you remember Sally Smith no I, 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 right, I'm not going to ask you how old you are I think I'm younger than you I'm, I'm 62 next month yeah, I'm 57, five years when you're a kid, is massive. Right. Sally. Yeah. Sally Smith. Yeah. Uh, down down the Ben Weema. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we used to go there on a Saturday night. Right. Uh, and then to a, a blues. So why would your sister kill you? Because times are different now and I don't think it's... Because <clears throat> she's like that. She's just a bit private. Oh, okay. So, I don't think anybody will know who she is anyway. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, got, tell me about, right, ask everyone the same question to begin with. Tell me about your first night down the Reno. The first night down the Reno, I was on my own. Astonishing. Brave. Um, I was only about... In fact, my first time down the Reno... It was a Sunday afternoon, <clears throat> and I was curious. It was curiosity that got me down the Reno, because everybody used to call it the den of iniquity. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to see what the den of iniquity exactly, looks exactly, like. Yeah, exactly. So I took oh, my sister. Got back. I took my niece, and well, two nieces. I took with me. Because um, it was a Sunday afternoon and they allowed kids in there. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 They allowed kids in there. Um, so I just, and I knew that probably my niece's uncle, Derek, remember Derek that was with Rose? Yeah. Well, that was, that was my brother-in-law's brother would be in there. Right. And we just sat down at a table. But I don't even remember if there's any music playing, to be honest, in the afternoon. What year are we talking? How old were you? How old were you? About 16. 71. Yeah, about 16. Yeah. I might have even been younger. <laughs> I, might, I, I must have left school. And I left school when I was 15. So I might have been, might have been 70, actually. Wow. I know. So, right, so go back to the beginning. So where are you sat when you think, oh, do you know what? I'm going to go down the arena, I'm going to get my two nieces <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to take them down the arena. Where was she sat? I don't know. Was she at home? I don't know. I don't know why. I just had this fascination. It must have been after I'd been to the clubs and the blues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was my sister doing taking me to them places at 15 years of age? That was just the thing now then. It was different world. Well, I was with her, so I was yeah, safe, exactly. I guess. It was the 60s, No, exactly it the 60s. It wasn't 70s. the 60s, it was, the, it was the 1970s. No, it was just at the end of the 60s, yeah. when, um, yeah. which was slower for... I agree with you. Freedom and all that came from America, loaded in freedom. No, exactly. We were looking for a different way to be. It was a whole different yeah, world then. Yeah, that, it was... It was a, it's like a, somebody just 
make switch, turn the switch on, and it changed the whole concept of life. I agree with you, Persian. You know? And the really noticeable place about that is music. Mm. You know, because before that you've got like, you've got Frank Sinatra, you know, all the yeah. ballads. Mm. And then suddenly you've got Sweet and... The 60s, you know, um, um, that's when um, soul music... Well, that was Motown. Yeah. That was Motown. For me, it was Motown. Yeah. But uh, how it all uh, came about is, I used to go in the mountain house. Me too. And the jukebox in there and all the yeah. it's um, sitting in the park. You know, and all that. Um, um, and in, um, the four tops and all them. So go, hold on, Persian. So back to Janice. You're not getting away with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, how old was your nieces? Well, if it was 1970. They would have been six. Right. Two of them about roughly about the same age. So you've walked from over Haversage Road. You've walked your two six-year-old nieces to see the den of iniquity <laughs> one Sunday afternoon when other people get to church. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what did you think when you walked in there? Um, I just thought it's like a pub. Okay. What's the big deal? But I'll have to check it out at night. Okay. That's what I thought. I'll have to come back and see if there's a difference. So without, without the nieces. <laughs> without the six-year-olds. Yeah. yeah. So you go on, tell us about that one. So the first night I walked in and looked around, looking for somebody that I knew, but I didn't really know. The only person that I knew was Cooley in okay. there. Because me and Cooley used to um, run around, friends, we were friends. Um, and I remember Cooley saying to me, because it wasn't till a long time after, that Sunday afternoon that I went in the Reno. Oh, okay. I remember Cooley saying to me, um, don't let my side hook you in. Oh, and I couldn't understand why, because, you know, he was part of my side. He didn't live in my side. And Cooley was in there, and he just looked at me. Anyway, he did what he was doing. He wasn't playing then. He wasn't mm -hmm. playing music then. And I just found a corner. Yeah. On the right-hand side of the stage, yeah. remember it? Where there was there was a table and chairs, but I just moved them. The music was playing, and that was me. On your own. On my own. Wow, that's some girl that then. Back in them days, that's quite something, really. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I knew people in my side, but not in the Reno. You know, my crew used to go up to the Nile and things like that, so they didn't come down the Reno. So he was hooked from then? Right from then. What do you think he meant about don't... What did he say again? Don't, don't let my side hook you. What did? What do you think he meant? I think he meant that bad things could happen. Um, I think he knew I was a bit vulnerable. Yeah. And maybe a little bit naive. So he didn't want me to get into all that, you know, whatever went on in my side. So what did you do all night? Dance. Just dance? On your own? Wow. I always wanted to be like that, but I was too shit, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went there for, me, for the music, so I didn't see any point in being there, listening to the music and not dancing, whether I was on my own or not. That's what I was there for. What was the what did the atmosphere feel like? It was packed. Was it? It was absolutely packed. So I suppose I felt hidden, I guess, because there was a lot of people in there. Um, but I do think people thought I was a bit strange. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they mostly do look at him. <laughs> Go on, why? Yeah, I do because I was on my own because mm. I just danced mm. in the corner. Um. 
and not a lot of people danced in the arena, from my memory. Yeah. Not not a lot of people. Do you remember that? Um, only when it comes for, you know, like in the week, the people used to just mostly sit down and listen to the music. But Friday and Saturday, there were more dancers. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you see, what happened was, a lot of people used to just move to the, you yeah. know, quietly to the music without um, being expressive in the dance thing, because they could stand anywhere and... and well, funny uh, enough, some, a friend of mine said to me, we were talking a long time ago about dancing, something came up, and she said, you don't dance, you just sway. <laughs> So it was just, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, the music made you... Um... I think it depends on the era as well, because I yeah. went in in 1976, mm. it was my first time, and we danced. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. didn't we, yeah, Persian? We, yeah. our lot really danced. Well, 1976 know? is the time that I was forbidden from, from, from 1976. I was forbidden to go in the arena because of the person that I was with. That's a few women I've heard this from, you know. What it was, why, you know, I don't know, they wouldn't go in there with me. So I obviously couldn't go in on my own. I don't know what that was. And how long was you with them? Too long. Till about 84. Wow. I'm just going to close the window because of, you know, noise from the car. So you've gone from being a really independent woman, free spirit, yeah, doing what I wanted to do, to being under manners, so to speak. That, you know, it's just sound like how I felt about myself. What do you mean? As a Gemini. Honest, it's a Gemini thing. I don't know if you had that. No, tell me what you mean. Maybe you didn't have it. But exactly how she expressed, she tell you what you've been saying about her self. I, I could have been saying the same thing about me. They, they, um, everything she said to you about her life. Being, her, being herself, being herself. Yeah. yeah. You know, the um, loner thing, the quiet um, observing more than speaking to people. It's like me, if I wasn't a DJ, yeah, I would be just like, oh, she said she's been talking to you about. Well, you was like you was like that even as a DJ yeah. because if you if you if you remember, mm. Persian 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 wasn't like a DJ really. Not of its day, no, no. absolutely not. You, ve you very rarely faced the front. You was just at the back. Mm. And you never spoke. Look, if, never. Well, you didn't, <laughs> want him, you yeah. didn't want him to speak anyway. You wanted him to play music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very rare you face the front. Yeah. You didn't. I used to look to see you, now and again to see yeah. you. Was, yeah, now and again. Know, now and again. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, you know, if I wanted, I used to, people thought I was, I was um, stuck up. Mick thought that about me too. People thought I was stuck up. Because if I have to walk from the stage, yeah, really playing the music to the gents' toilet, I was nervous. Oh, okay. Honest, I was so shy. No, I was shy. That I was nervous. Was yeah. I used to just get there as quickly as I can without looking left or right, and never spoke to nobody, and people thought I was stuck up. <laughs> Look at him, the stuck up bastard. Yeah. And you're just did. shy. But funny enough, I don't know how it come about. But I found myself in a flat one one morning with um, Susie and Mandy and them. Yeah. That crew. Yeah. And we we were talking. And that's how I come to know them and became close yeah. friends. 
But what do you mean you found yourself in the flat? I don't know. It was some guy's flat that I knew. After a party, after, after the arena, arena one night, okay. you've gone to a flat. Yeah, with some guy. I don't know if it's um. It could have been um Derek Thomas. Yeah. Or Derek Star, one of them. Most likely Derek Thomas. Yeah, on Claremont, Derek. Off Claremont Road. I don't remember where it was, but I can remember that incident. And that's how I come to speak to Susie and Mandy and that lot. Yeah. Because they usually stand by the door. Yeah. In that little corner. Yeah, the near door. the women's toilets. Yeah, near the women's toilets. Toilet. never come in. Yeah. Early. But it had that feeling, the whole thing had a, had a feeling of where you could go mm. and not go and what you're doing. So you was really super brave to just walk or in. Or stupid. Yeah. One of, no, one of the two. No, stupid. It's just... Just the, 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 the... I don't know what it is. Well, I wanted to... It's the music. It's the music yeah. because... This type the music and she wants you to... To enjoy the music, and she well, it was music I'd never heard before. Yeah, you know, yeah, there was Motown, and 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 that's what I was used to. Um, but this was there was so, it was I'd never heard it before, so every tune got me up. In yeah. fact, I never sat down. Yeah, you know, every tune got me up, and and if I did sit down, if I was knackered, they immediately. Yeah, you don't know, well, like this one. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Maybe that's why people thought I was a bit weird because I was up. Um, <laughs> you know, but... Um, did anybody ever say to you you're a bit weird or did you just think that you're a bit weird? They thought you was a bit weird. No, I'd heard people say, she, you know, years later she used to just stand in the corner and freak out. I wasn't really freaking out. I was just swaying to the music. That's all I was doing. I still think that's astonishing. You know the guy, right? As a woman to woman, is it a guy out of the arena? Would I know him? Um, I should have brought a photograph actually. <laughs> this bastard. Yeah. Who was he? Well, I don't want to say it. On yeah, camera. no. Just tell us when we come off camera, Persian. Mm. Yeah, you, you. I don't know whether you'll know him. He did go, yeah, he did go in the Reno. And a lot of people from my side in the Reno will know him. And was it just the Reno he didn't want you to go into? Or he didn't, no, he didn't. Moss Side. Moss Side was out of bounds totally. But the Reno, because that's where I wanted to go. I didn't want to go anywhere else. Yeah. And he, would, he wouldn't take me. Can we go to the Reno? In fact, I didn't really go many places. It was like I was hidden for some reason. It's not unusual. No, no. At that time. No, I know. Yeah. What he was doing, I don't know. I mean, I know what he was doing, but I don't know whether that's the reason he didn't want me in the arena or he just thought that his woman yes, exactly. shouldn't be seen in the arena. No, exactly. No, that yeah, was but, just a well, thing. Well, it was hypocritical, time. you know, if he was going in. Why? Oh, so he carried on going, going in. It was just a thing of the time, Janice, mm -hmm. loads of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just our standing at the time. See, it's just really different times. Mm -hmm. is, is that... Did you accept it or fight against it? I couldn't fight against it. I couldn't fight against it. I had to accept it. But I missed it. I missed oh, it. Yeah. I missed the Reno. So what would you do on Saturday and with the nights that you... Wow. Never went anywhere. Wow. No, I, dis I just disappeared. So it's a, it's a wonder people didn't think I was dead. Because I just vanished. But if you'd have been alone or in the club? But people knew me. Eventually, yeah. you know, people yeah. knew me. Um, even though I didn't kind of um, join up with any clique or anything like that, people knew me. You know, people would let on and I'd let on to them and I knew people, but while I was in the Reno, I just wanted to be on, in my spot and that was it and do my thing. Because people, like I say, didn't really want to dance. 
I'm not quite sure what they went in there for, to be honest. The music, like everybody else. But I don't know, it didn't make you dance. Music, Do you know music, what I mean? Um, you know, lure you in. Because I was, you remember I said, you're playing music for the head. Yeah. You know, without them realising what happened, the music I was playing was going to the head more than the feet. It's only when Cooley started playing that he started to play more dance music. Right. Because that's what I wanted him to do. More political music. You know. Maybe he was just paranoid though, because it's quite a kind of statement to dance, isn't it? You know, like to just... Because mm. it's a very different Reno that I first went in mm. to the one that I, I left. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't go out. You know, the, it was a different type of a club. Mm -hmm. When did you start going in? Um, prop about 83. Right. Yeah. The Reno changed for me because eventually I got back down there. Yeah. Um, the Reno changed for me when Moses... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I didn't well, go back when, in. When did you stop going to the, when did you stop playing? I think um, I told you that I, I did um I think it was just at eighty three. Yeah. It changed. I did the then. um Christmas, the box, the That's New Year's right. Eve night. And I was knew, there that night. I knew that I wasn't going to go back in. That was my last night. Well, you see, when you went Persian, it stopped being the Reno to me. Mm. You know, like each week I'd go a few more weeks and mm. then so be playing and I think, oh, I don't like them. That was shit. And then it'd happen again. And then it'd happen again. And then it was like... It was Moses and um, Tumbling and yeah. that block. Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't go in. I never... When I left, I never went back in. Yeah. I know. You, you, you just disappeared. Yeah, just left. I told you I was going as, in, a, in the interview. Yeah. I didn't let no money, no. You went to Germany? I went to Germany in 81. Right. And I was in Germany. My friend had a club in Germany called Third World. Yeah, you've told and me. And I went there to play. It was um, the anniversary of the club opening and I went over. Kenny was the mm. DJ of the club. He and, um and um, Patrick Grant, you know, um, Eddie Grant's brother. Yeah, let's get, hold on. You've told us this person. Yeah, Eddie yeah. Grant, Grant brother, Patrick Grant and Junior, and um, Kenny were the DJs of the club. And Carl was the guy that owned the club, a Jamaican mm -hmm. guy that we knew. And the other school friend was on it, was, the manager, and we, I went over and I spent three months with them, you know, DJing at the yeah. club. Janice, did you meet him in the arena? No. Where did you meet him then? I knew him from years back from the Ritz, um, where he was, he, he used to chase me and I wasn't interested. And then years later, I mean, he, he was... He hated me for not wanting him. Oh, okay. Um, and he went and got married and blah, blah. And then I met up with him again. And I said, look, you know, let's call this a truce. It's ridiculous. And then from then, that was that. I think I met him in that place in Old Saints that Ben used to have. Um, I know what you mean. Do you? I can't remember the name. I can't either. remember the name, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and that was that. Tell us a good story that you've seen in the real world. I don't, I don't have any good stories, I don't think. Because it was all good for me. Yeah. I don't I don't remember any good stories. Just something unusual. I remember taking, um, do you remember the foundations, Clem Curtis and the yeah. foundations? Well, I took Clem Curtis down the arena. Where did you meet him? At the Carib in Cheetah Right. And um, he took 
are shining to me. And, oh, bullshit, man. I'm not leaving Manchester without you, and all this and that. I had a big Bentley. But he wanted to smoke. And I said, okay, I'll take you to where you can get a smoke. And I took him down the Reno. He didn't stay long enough. <laughs> Why? And I don't think anybody recognised who he was, unless they were in the carry before yeah. that night and recognised him. Why did he not stay long? He, he just have... wanted the weed. Yeah, he just wanted the weed. He wanted to get back to London. Well, in the night when they had that, the New Year's Eve night when they had big fire. I'll never forget that night. What night? What night? It was the New Year's Eve night. Yeah. And the arena was so packed, they couldn't get another person in. It was mm -hmm. that poor. I've never seen it that poor. And all of a sudden, these two guys started fighting with knives. Wow. In the, on the dance floor. Do we know the guys? Or you I just know two? them. Yeah, go on. I went to one of them, funeral. No, it wasn't his funeral. Um, I met him at a funeral in Leeds a few months ago back. And he was called Bread. Oh, and I remember the, Bread. And the other one was um, called, um, was from Liverpool, called Liverpool. <laughs> so I you know, a woman. Oh, right. And you see, that's why you couldn't go I've to the Reno, Dennis. I've never seen people move, you know. Move you know, away, that yeah. Look that pack that you couldn't get any space. And when the fight started, there was a big opening. <laughs> Even must have gone up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen, you know, all of a sudden, there's this big space in the, the dance floor was empty. Where the people went, I don't know how they got out of Did they cut each other or was it stopped? I don't remember if anybody, if they got caught, but it was with a knife. The well, they used to knife. shape up, didn't yeah. they, back in mm. the day. It was like, yeah. nothing ever happened, but they used mm. to just shape. I never forget that knife. What's the worst thing you can... I don't know the knife. Go on. We're in the arena. These two girls started fighting, I don't know what they were fighting over. And one of them flung a buckle and it hit me right there <laughs> on the stage. Wow. Who was the girl? Her name was um, Miriam. <laughs> Those two sisters used to stand in the corner where um, Trips them used to be. Ilima. Alima and, 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 and Miriam. Miriam. Yeah. They had a fight. Well, I used to go, I used to go with Miriam. Right. And she flung a bottle up to this girl and missed the girl on the bottle. <laughs> I used to live in the same house as Miriam, but in mm. just separate flats. Mm. So she could have killed Persian. Was you going with her at that time? Yeah. <laughs> and she was lovely, Miriam, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What, tell us there's something awful that you've seen in the arena. Well, I've seen women get beat up. Have you? Yeah, I've seen women get beat up. I mean, it's... I remember something that sticks out in my mind, and it wasn't um, a big beating or anything. It was... I don't even know who the guy was now. I can't remember. And I remember they were stood near the door, and this guy just whacked her, and she just stood there. And then he whacked her again, and she still just stood there. And it knocked me sick, actually. But no one would ever intervene. It was nobody's business. And then I think he just dragged her outside the Reno. But I was in my corner, and it was in my, yeah. in my line. And I just couldn't believe it. Do you think that was a good thing or a bad thing, that nobody intervened? How can it be a good thing? No, I don't kind of quite mean that. Would you think someone should have intervened? Yeah. I know why they, they didn't, because that was how things was and, and it could have got worse, you know, then you could have had people fighting and, and stuff like that, but there's a lot of things that went on in my side that shouldn't have gone on in my side, but nobody did or said anything about it but we're talking with a mind from now that was normal then i'm not saying it was it right was, it was normal but 
But, and some people, it didn't bother some people, but it bothered me. Mm. And it wasn't right. Mm. You know, things happened, you know, things happened to me that really should have been reported to the police. People should have been locked up. But it wasn't the dumb thing. And I still wanted to be part of that community. So I wasn't going to make enemies. There you go. Yeah. That's the answer. And it's sad. It's sad, really, because, you know, the things that happen have lasting effects. To yourself, what happened to you? Well, to people, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, of course. Yeah, but when you, when you think about it, what you used to go on in the arena was going on everywhere else. It was more sad. We just thought that... just arena. We just thought that what was up in that arena was out of the norm. But if you go to other places, even in town, there was worse things going on. But we weren't part of it. Hmm. Do, you you not, do you not agree, Janice? Because even now... Not to that extent, no. Even now, when you go into town, mm -hmm. it's, worse, it's terrible. Well, that's now. <clears throat> and people are different. People are... It's a different cause now. It's a different society now. That was... That was like a culture. It absolutely was. Keep going. And I'm hesitant to say it was a culture because it, it's it's probably derogatory to culture, but it, it kind of was a culture. Um, and it, it was it was a dangerous place to be, in all honesty. Right, you've said loads of things there. If it's derogatory to culture, and you just said you wanted to be part of the culture, why did but you? But I didn't want, want to be part of that culture. I wanted to be part of the scene, but not the ways. Not a lot of the ways, um, because I enjoyed the music. I enjoyed the people, but that, but what they were doing. But that part of it yeah. was, you know, it spoilt it. It spoilt it. No. Being more specific, right, I know you don't want to say what happened mm. to you or you would have said it, right? But be more specific about what you... Because I didn't see these things. I don't know which club I was in, but I didn't see these things. Well, you didn't always see it. Mm. And you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't always hear about it because people kept quiet about it. Mm. You know, people are not going to... Who I don't know who it was that gave you that anonymous no, go on, yeah. statement. No, great. That was totally true and I totally get where she's coming from. And it's sad that all these years later, that's obviously still affecting her. The person, right, there's two different ones. One right. person said, anonymous said, that they thought that people, women won't talk because they didn't want to be associated with, known to be associated with black guys and things and that would hurt their reputation. And then um, Sue Taylor Thomas says some women might not be talking because they were beaten up and raped. They could have been beaten up and raped and things. A lot of that was going on. Of course it do you was. Do you reckon, yeah. really? Without a doubt. Yeah. Oh, okay. 100%. I'm not just being stupid. I really don't know this. 100%. But you came on the scene late. Yeah. Again, because you didn't yeah. come on to in the back end of the 76, 70. yeah. You know, well, in the, before that, yeah, it used something more in the early part, didn't it? It changed. Really? Yeah, the culture changed. Like when you when you started coming in, the arena and around Mustang, it was different. But say from in the sixties, right up to mid seventies, it was bad. A lot of um, things. Used to go on in the Mossad community. Right? Mm. Yeah. See, I'm still just a kid then. Mm. Yeah. But Janice, why are you putting yourself in harm's way then? If that's what you know is going on. Well, because you don't think it's going to happen to you. Okay, fair statement. You know, it's like anything. P people do that today, they put themselves in harm's way because they never think it's going to happen to them. And and by this time, you know, I knew people mm. and you thought they'd protect you. 
when really in reality they probably wouldn't they yeah. wouldn't interfere yeah um because they never interfered yeah so you've seen women dragged out of there to be raped and not to the arena because yeah I wouldn't have seen that happening because of where I am DJing. I don't see okay. that. Okay. I can't that specifically activity. say no, not, that happened in the arena. Not in the arena. It wouldn't surprise me if, if, it, if, if it happened, happen, but I, but I can't I say really, sorry. I couldn't be, didn't see it. But what I'm talking about is round by Monta now, some places like that, and the Strubines. A lot of bad things are happening in them. And those people that were doing those bad yeah. things would come in the arena, yeah. but they wouldn't necessarily do, do those bad things in the arena. arena. Right. Well, that, that place was full of bad people. <laughs> Seriously. Mm. There was a lot of bad people in that in there. There was a lot of bad people upstairs in the Nile. There was a lot of bad people in, in the blues. Mm. You know, there's a lot of bad people everywhere in my side, but there's a lot of good people too. Yeah. What do you class as bad? A pimp? There were pimps, there were... Um, well, just people who... who you know, everybody who, doing bad things, yeah, wrong things. Who had no... No respect, scruples. No, no morals, no mm, scruples. Mm. Who, who used and abused women. You know, who... Um, did what they did and didn't care of the consequences to the other people. That's what it was like. There was a lot of that. And do you know what? I didn't really want to get what? into all that because that's not the Reno. No, but but it's fair. It's been said on the it's been said on the website, and I've not known how to respond to it because when I tried to respond to it, someone said that I was too protective of the Reno. So for a couple of weeks, I've been thinking, how do I respond to that? Because so it's great to talk about it. I'm dead happy that you're talking about it. Do you know what I mean? That it's not just me going to talk about it. You just mine. Because I don't know if I am being protective. The Reno for me was a positive experience. Even me becoming a writer and everything comes out of being in the Reno. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And like talking to Tom, meeting Tom, Paul Collins, Derek and all their gang and starting to think about the world in a different way. Much more political. Me effing and blinding in the Arts Council for me money comes directly out of the Reno because I'm not scared, you know what I mean? So it's a positive experience for yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, and I get where you're coming from yeah. about being protective because even I, you know, if, if I heard people calling Moss Side or, or the Reno or black people, I would be protective mm. as well because not everybody mm. was like that. And not everybody in in any community is the same as everybody else. But we were all complicit. It was a small community. Yeah, right? very. Yeah. So, yeah, and, the, and like like you say, complicit. There was a lot of people complicit in it, definitely. Well, yeah. we all vaguely knew what was going on. But then on the same hand, I know loads of pimps, right? I know loads of pimps and loads of ex-prostitutes who are happy together still. And to me, that is a wonderful love story that you've done 40 odd years and you've seen the absolute worst you can both see of each other and you're still together. That's just... Yeah? Yeah, but there are the, the other side to that is yeah. that there are women who were prostitutes and men who were pimps who women who never recovered from that? Yeah, okay. You know, yeah, the, yeah. There, there is happy endings, and people get over it, and they did what they did. Yeah, and you know, that was their that was their choice, and it's not really pimps and prostitutes that I'm talking about. Well, tell me what you're talking because about. Because that 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 was. They accepted their existence. Yes, exactly, and we accepted their but existence. But there's the people who didn't have none to do with it who got abused. But so, and some women were forced into it. And, okay. You know, these people that you're talking about that are happy now, they probably went along with it and, and got to a certain point and they were, you know, the ambition was to get to a certain point and then that was the end of it. Um, and maybe that was the only way 
to make a living them days. Mm. It wasn't right. But it was it was about the abuse and, and the forced nature of things and and pe- guys thinking they could do absolutely anything to a woman and get away with it. And they did. Which was part of the culture of society's culture at the time. Janice, you, we couldn't have had a mortgage in 1975 in our own name as a woman. So I'm just saying, you know, the filtered down thing of what men thought about women. It's a different world now, isn't it? You know, you wouldn't, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. None of it's right, but you just. Yeah, I don't, well, I don't know whether I agree with you because, you know, um, my dad didn't use and abuse my mother. You know, no, and, you're right. and did your father use and abuse your mother? And did your, do you know what I mean? It's It was Moss Side. And I'm not saying things wasn't going on out of Moss Side, but because it was a small community, it was no, it was more noticeable, and you knew, you knew personally knew, who was doing all this, and who was suffering. You personally knew these people, so it affected you. Well, it affected me, definitely affected me. Why? What did you want? You wanted to stop it. You wanted did, to say I, yeah, something. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was. It wasn't right. You know, it wasn't right. And it even. Oh, I'm not even going there. It's it's um. Some people have have um. Morals, and some don't have them. Because we don't care how you were brought up. If it's not in you. You go off the rails. Mm. You know, it depends on each individual, how you, ex- how you look at life. Because some people come from good homes and go bad, if you know what I mean. And some people come from bad homes and go good. So it depends on each individual, and you know, uh, how you look at life. There's also the fact life. that the, the women that put up with that, I think, were desperate for love. Oh. So no. What wh- whoever showed them and, and however they showed them attention. That was Janice, a, I was like that. That was okay. Yeah. That was, I was a lot of Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was potentially good game for anything. I was mm. just lucky. Mm. Well actually I don't know whether I was lucky or not. The night that I met Tom, right? At the bottom of the stairs was a meme for Gali who was gorgeous. I absolutely thought he was gorgeous, right? And at the top of the stairs, it was Easter Sunday, and at the top of the stairs was Tom. Now, luckily for me, I went up the stairs because we because a then gets into, you know, heroin and stuff, and I, I know me, do you know, I know that I had the potential then to have had that terrible journey, but instead that night I chose to go up the stairs because. I like the way that Tom taught. And then I've ended up doing an hour's meditation every day. For, you know, and everything that has come out of that. So, I know, yeah. Do you know, I don't even know where I began with Tom saying what I'm saying. Wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time. Desperate for love. Not wanting, you know, like, wanting to be affiliated. Do you know what I mean? Cause you've wanting got, to be accepted. Wanting yeah, to exactly. be accepted. Exactly. And you didn't want to take yourself away from what was most of the time, and enjoy. You know, it was enjoyment. It was it was where you wanted to be. Yeah. And not only that, you met somebody mm. who um, you felt were good mm. for you. Yeah. You know, the way he. he um, came across to you, you knew that you liked him. Yeah, I did. Enough to want to go further. Yeah, I did. You know? So, in a way, that was your destiny to meet him. Yeah. But all, you time. put all on the same person in a split second, second. my destiny could have been... The other way. The, the other, other way. way. Yeah, yeah. You know? Definitely. Yeah. So this is what we're saying, it depends. 
and your circumstances and the position you find yourself in at certain times in your life. Mm. The choices you make. You know, yeah, the choices that you the make. The choices that you make. But the, well, they're not always informed choices, are they? Mm. And, and, and you're blinded sometimes. Mm. I mean, this guy that, that um, stopped me going in the Reno um, was different to all to the other guys in in my mind he worked okay um you know he wasn't um he wasn't a drug dealer um he wasn't a pimp um and that appealed to me yeah. because you know most of the other the other guys that showed me attention were all yeah. that so that was my that was my escape from that kind of. Well, I didn't want to escape from the Reno, but it turns out that yeah, that I was stopped going down. But that turned out that relationship turned out to be one of the worst relationships ever. I'm presuming there's violence involved. There's a lot of violence. Yeah, a lot of violence. I wish I'd have brought his photograph, but I won't. I won't mention his no, name. That's and there'll be, there'll be people watching this that you will know, know exactly yeah. who I'm talking about. But yeah. I'm not mentioning his name. But the irony of that, though, because he had all the credentials that said it should have been good. Exactly. Yeah. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. I'd have been better off just staying in the Reno in the corner. Yeah, not just, with anybody. just enjoying yourself mm -hmm. and being your own person. Exactly. But you know what, I and I don't know whether this was because you went in late. I don't was it you that that mentioned wall to wall half castle? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I don't remember that. Yeah, that's probably because I went in late as Possibly. well. Possibly. And if you didn't start going until 76, that's when I was stopped going. You're right. So, because I, I don't remember that at all. I just remember an, a mix of people. Yeah. Um, that was a bit alien to me, and I thought... I remember that clear as a bell right. the first night that right. I went down. You know, because there's like Derek Thomas, Marcus, you know, loads of them. And it's like, wow. You know, just yeah. all over yeah. the place. But definitely there was a mix. Yeah, there was a big, there was a big mix. Yeah, in the early days. Yeah. There mm. were a lot of, um... The students. Students. And all kinds of people. Because you mentioned that, didn't I? Mm. Yeah. But you see, know, I didn't see that. I, it's two different clubs, in it? It's two mm. totally different clubs. It changed. Clubs. As you yeah. say, it changed. You know. But, um... There's lots of students because of the university. Yeah. And I told you about the prospectors. Yeah. You know, I mentioned the, the Reno. Imagine, go to the Reno, you and, stop um, doing your degree and end up on the game. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah um, the people like from Coronation Street. Yeah. And other actors who were working in Manchester at the time. Because there were lots of cabaret clubs around, remember? And when they used to finish at 2 o'clock, it was at yeah. 2 o'clock. And they would all head for the Reno. So there's a you know, it was a more cosmopolitan club, you know, and there's a, quite a, a, a bit of black in there as well. In the Reno? Yeah. Not much, but there's... Well, they were all in the gambling house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the gambling room. Come into gambling, yeah. Maybe. yeah, and stand up at the back for Because there were very few black girls in there. You could count them, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Black girls used to go Yeah, that the was night. noticeable. Yeah, they were all upstairs in the yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah, funny that. There's only a few used to come in the arena. Yeah. Yeah, I can picture in a few now. Even in the early days. Yeah. And then like Annette, um, Jarrett, 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 and, yeah. Um, yeah. and Jones's um, sister. Can't yeah. remember her name. Jones's sister never came in the arena. Yeah, one of them did. Can't remember her name. I can't think of which one of them came in the Reno because they were all younger than him. 
Yeah. So they wouldn't have been in there that time? Not at that early stage. Yeah. They came in later. I don't remember. You know, like... Um, well, there's Lana, Sonia. Lana. Lana came in the arena yeah, later, was Yeah, later on. Later on, she right. started coming in. Because she was knocking about with... Um, what's her name? Um, Pearl. Pearl Brown. Brown. Around that day, that crew used to come in. Well, I don't remember Lana in the arena at all. Pearl Brown used to... What's going on with um, Squire? Squire, yeah. yeah. You know, so Squire used to be in the arena with Pearl Brown and that little crew. Yeah. Jonesy and um, Monica. Monica. Oh, Monica. No one's mentioned Monica. Monica. Yeah. yeah, I did earlier. Did you? I did yeah. 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 I might not have seen that then. Yeah. Because Monica was a proper arena lad. Yeah. Mm. I must get a photo of it. That yeah. wouldn't be hard, actually. No, it won't be hard. Yes, yeah. on, on the public eye, yeah. 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 Oh, thanks very much. I did, I did mention her in one, but right. then I've, I've forgotten. And no one's really mentioned Jonesy. Yeah, I mm. think his brother does, obviously. I don't, well... It, it, Leroy did mention him. Did he not? You know, no. Because I watched Leroy. Yeah, in, in, uh, and Carmen. And Carmen, mm. and he did mention Jonesy. He, he, he did mention him. Very, very slight. And he but, had a brother, what was his name? Um, the younger one. Carlton. Carlton, you saw him going as a. Mm. And Carlton, the like crew. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody had a crew, apart from Janice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have a crew. Well, yeah. they were upstairs in the night. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a crew. Ada and, and Janet was, was part of the crew. And Tommy. Yeah. And, uh, and Jonesy. Yeah. So did he used to meet up afterwards? Yeah. 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 In the blues. Yeah. In the blues. Mm. Blues. Kaz. Blues. Be, yeah. Kaz. Kaz blues. Was, yeah. Was used to follow stops. Kaz all yeah, over the country. Kaz blues was stops. Or um, Paul. Or um, Pendant Street and yeah. Green Street. Yeah. Did all I mention place. that night when he left Mountain House? Me and my little crew. Go on. Left Mountain House to go to Cas Blues and Green Street. Just such a cross of Alec Road, there's a piece of blues and Green Street. Yeah. And it went on until eleven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and we came out of the blues. Oh yeah, I think you said but go on. We drove. Oh no, go on. We drove to um, the blues, yeah. Yeah. And about eleven o'clock in the morning when Cas signed off and the cellar was still full. And we came out, crawled out of the cellar <laughs> and started walking. I didn't know where we ended, we found ourselves. Windsor Road, Willington <laughs> Road. We we're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> so we turned back from Willington Road and walked all the way to Mountain House in Mountain Street and forgot that we drove. <laughs> forgot the car. <laughs> That's some good weed, man. <laughs> God, Mountain House, that was some. Oof. Mm. The Percy. Get out of Mountain House. Percy. Mm. Some bad things went on there. In Mountain House, yeah. Like what Percy <laughs> look at him smiling. You were holding for the time camera. <laughs> bad. I had the oh um Paul Abaku says to remind you about when you used to do playoffs with Kaz. Yeah. Yeah, was she called Persian Pussycat or something? Said. I don't remember cool that. How did I miss cool that? Cool Cat. Cool Cat. Yeah. Must I go to town? In um, Unser Town, in, in um, Deansgate. Big, big show. Yeah, Paul I remember going you. to Holes with Hall for something, but I can't remember what it was for. It was um, Must I Go to Town. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Kaz and I played against each other. Yeah. And we played at um, Nilla Dream Centre against each other. Yeah, Paul Abiku said to remind yeah. you because he used to follow it round. Yeah. Yeah, to go and listen. Because it was me and Chaz all the while. Yeah, you were the two yeah. main. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So how have you become friends? You used to use that from where you stood in the arena. Yeah, just that. Uh, she used to come and, you know... We have chips them used to be yeah. in that corner. Yeah, the opposite, opposite corner. That's where that was her corner. 
And this is just by the slaves there. Yeah. So we used to say hello to each other. Oh, you know, I would because, dance sometimes. Really because they liked her, you see, because of her. They were, we had to do to each other. Because she was, to me, she was just a type of person that I would be interested in. Oh. <laughs> you know? But yeah. I was too shy to even. Know. I wouldn't chat no woman up. Would you, you seem no. to have had a fair few though, you know what I mean? Yeah, over a period of time, you, you start a relationship and then it fades because for whatever reason. And then you're on your own because I used to live with Kenny. We had a house in the Caribbean, a beautiful bungalow. No. Kenny bought this bungalow, new, and this private estate. And I went to live with him, the two of us shared it. So most of the time I lived on my own, you know, because as I say, my lifestyle don't suit a relationship. No, true enough if you're up all night. Yeah. So get back to Janice when he was interested in her, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so, she, would, she would be the type of girl that I would be interested yeah. in, but don't know how to approach. All oh, right. You know, because I never chat no woman up. Oh, Janice, was you that. aware of this? I would have... Be tongue tied and start to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> so we just say hello to each other, yeah. and, you know, just have a nice, you know, that kind of, you know. Yeah. I know, but we didn't, we, we didn't, we, I mean, we lost contact, didn't we, for yeah. years and years and years. Because when I left the arena, I went working in um, the airport. The airport, yeah. And I didn't come in my side for 22 years. Wow. You know, it's when I retired from the airport. Um, this guy, um, had a dance in, um... Was it Dry Bar? It was Dry Bar? Yeah. Yeah. In Oldham Street. Yeah. And he, want, he wanted me to play. Because it was, um, Soul Control, mm. um, Dennis, um, Tumbling, and me for the DJs. And I went and they put me downstairs in a little room. They didn't have me in the main room. Bastards. And at the same that night I was also playing in old in Shopper Bar at a party. But I, I went to do that first and then when that when I left there I went and did the party in Shopper Bar. And that's when this Remember. Well, I saw him walking in. I had no idea that he was playing there. Right. It was New Year's yeah. Eve. It was a New Year's yeah. Eve thing when I was with yeah. Grace. It was New Year's Eve. And I saw him walking in, and of course, I haven't seen him for, for 12, more than 20 years. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't <laughs> believe it was him. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Oh. oh. It. <laughs> yeah. it was so, it was so nice. And I remember Grace said to me, because we were hugging, and, and yeah. it was like, God, I can't believe it. Mm. And great when I turned around, Grace said, "Who's that?" I said, "It's Persian." <laughs> Who is it? And she, mm. I remember her saying to you, "You should be playing a set now." He said, "I am. I'm downstairs." Mm. So that was it. We were downstairs then. And then the next time we met was at um, um, Reddish. Your first dance at the uh, Reddish. Um, no, it wasn't. No, it was. Um, was it? Yeah. Relish, um, Rena Revival at Relish. Was that the first one? Yeah. Right. See, Janice, you know I'm And um, Sally was drunk. That's and right. And grabbed a I'm trying to play the record. And she was going out we were wanting to dance. Yeah. Drunk. She couldn't even stand up. <laughs> I had to get um, somebody to take her. Drag uh, her off you. Yeah. Drag her off me. So... How did you get away from Mr. Man? Um, he started seeing somebody else and then oh. just kind of didn't tell me. So, although I wanted to get away from him, um, was frightened to. So it was, luck would have it, he started seeing somebody else. So he took himself out of the situation? Yeah, still wanted to come back every now and again, though. But, um, 
And did you let him? For a while. For a while I did, yeah. But then it was just, it was over and done with. So tell me about the first night back in the Reno after Mr. Man. I don't even know whether I can remember that. Mr. Okay, you came back in your car, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I reclaimed the corner. Did you? Yeah. yeah. I reclaimed that corner. So, did you go back in with friends or on your own when you went back in? Probably on my own. On our own. It's never really anything. Yeah. yeah. Probably on my own. Because you, he know as he's been watching yeah. you for years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so after all, that's amazing, isn't it? So it's like eight years later. Yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. That you just come back, go back in your corner. And carry on with your swaying. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and your dancing. Exactly. I mean, after, I mean, the appeal of, as well about the Reno was that it was open every night. Well, Moss Side was open yeah, every night, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I remember um, Billy Marble saying that it was a place that could hold you back from doing what, I don't okay. know what his, I can't remember his words. Yeah. And it's, and it's probably true, that. I think... Um, I think it held a lot of people back. Not the Reno per se, but Moss Side mm. because because it wasn't just a weekend thing. You know, it did take you week, but you was in there. If you if it if it was open every night, you're gonna be. Well, I was gonna be in there every night. I didn't want to miss a trip. Yeah. You know, I used to not even go to the toilet in case I missed a tube. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be standing there bursting, and I won't go to the toilet yeah. in case there's a tube comes on. So I think I think it did hold a lot of people back. Um, but you can't lay blame to it really. That's the choice you Because a lot of this, stuff this, this tune more than any tune that's you that really hit you. I don't think I can pick one particular tune, but people like Willie Hutch and mm -hmm. and Earth, Wind and Fire. Mm -hmm. Um those kind of, mm. of tunes, because that's what the Reno was for me, it was musical memories. Mm. Yeah. You know, and the minute I hear any of those tunes now, I'm back in there. Yeah, really are. Cool. And there's nowhere yeah. else, there's nowhere else, no other tunes from anywhere that would take me back to, to there, to, to where it was. Mm. But those tunes will take me right back in my Same spot there. at the side of the stage. Same here. So it's it's a, a it takes you back to an entire experience in it. Of you know, like you see it, you feel it. <clears throat> yeah, same here. It's like now when I'm on the radio and the tune that I'm playing now is what I would have been playing if the arena was still, still around. around. Mm. You know, it's different tunes because time has changed. Um and sometimes I do an arena revival and I um, show where I play tunes from those early days. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'll be playing at Mandy's Third Dimension, won't you, on the 2nd of June? Hmm? Are you coming, Janice? I'm going to try. Definitely you are. You're going to be playing at Mandy's yeah, the um, third club night on third, yeah, third, third Dimension, dimension on the 2nd yeah. of June. Yeah. And recre recreate that feeling, all them tunes. Because like you said, it's just some music. It just gets in you yeah? and mm. you're back there. Except I've got new moves these days. Because I would have been shy then, but I've bust new moves and I've got <laughs> older, I don't care. But the thing is, um, yeah. like, the, if you're not into... What I find out about music, sometimes you hear it for the first time and you don't say, oh, I don't like that. Mm. And then you hear it for another few times and then you realise, oh, this is beautiful. Mm. You know, and they come part of your life. Well, this is what might happen with the new music that I'm Yeah, playing. no true enough. You know? No true enough. You've listened to the shows, haven't you? What do you think about the music that I'm playing now? It does take a bit of getting used to mm. because because you expect, mm. you see, I expect mm. different mm. from you. But yeah, it's nice music. Yes, it's, Definitely. Nice. it's really beautiful music. 
But as I say, it takes a while. You have to hear it a few times well, for it to grow on you. You know? So hopefully it will happen. It's like when I do um, play out now at parties, um, because of the, the um, what people are used to, people like to dance to what they're used to. Yeah. You know? So wherever you go now, you hear the same tunes. It's like when I did Frank's thing. Yeah. You know, it was a good night for the dance floor. No, definitely but, it was wrong to the dance yeah. floor. Well, Frank's funeral. Yeah, yeah. it was wrong. It was a good um, dance floor. And even when I did... Um, Coolie. Cool. Well, Coolie didn't no. really cause up really for us. Mm. And the amount of people that mm. didn't turn up. Um, but like um, Bubbles Party, mm. that was a good thing. You know. No, they really enjoyed it. Yeah, that Shall was very good. And Go on. um, ones like that, where you stick to the known yeah. music, you get the dance floor going and people enjoy it. But um, you don't you're not allowed to play new music on those scenes because okay. this, this is why I like the radio. Yeah. Because on the radio, you know, you're not doing a dance floor. Mm. You're playing music that you would want people to hear. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that, that's how people. But I'm getting good um, feedback. Good. On the radio. For what I'm, the music I'm playing now. You know, proper good feedback coming from abroad. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So you got big audience. As far as Dubai. But it's internet radio. Yeah, all oh, so right. It's brilliant. Internet. You know, people from Dubai and places like that, America. So you're a global star yeah, it's now. Yeah, a global thing now, the internet. The, th the thing is, when when we go to, play, to places where you're playing, mm. we want to be taken back. Exactly. Yeah, this is what I'm That's saying. Exactly. We definitely want to be taken mm. back because that's why we follow you. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it's that well said, Janice. I would true. like you, Pete, that's why I'm. Um, well, we don't care people. what you'd like. We, <laughs> want, we don't care what you yeah, like. But I would like you, Pete, yeah. to listen to what I'm playing. Yeah. Trying to play it for them now. Yeah. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's brilliant music. Some of the tunes are, to me, is outstanding. That's why I play them. You know? And, um, but as I say, when people go out for a night out, they don't want to hear what new music. Yeah. They want to hear the Reno. They only music. want to hear the Reno classics, no? Yeah. And just like go, you know, like screaming, ah, I love this one, mm. you know, yeah. Mm. Before we end, Janice. Tell like me. when I did Tommy's. What well, bastard, come like on. Like Tommy's. <laughs> Like Tommy's night. Yeah. That was a good night as well. No, it was. You, the dance yeah. floor was full. Yeah, that was a good night. Tell me, right, anything you want to tell me before we end, but also tell me something that really sticks out to you about the Reno, absolutely is defining about it to you. You see, the Reno is just music. It, the, te, the muse, te Persian and the music away okay. from the Reno, and the, um, the Reno is just another, just another place. So for me, the Reno was the music. It wasn't anything else, and I, I suppose also the fact that there were familiar faces in there, and it was. It was small, so it was intimate. Mm, that's um, yeah, that's you know, and and eventually, um, y you felt okay to go in there. But to me, it can't be anything else but the music. When I told me that, when I left the arena, when me and Phil fell out, and I left to go and work in um, smokies and all that. Mm. I was, I, I was, it was brilliant because of. I turned that place into one of the top nightclubs in the Northwest. 
And but I wasn't playing to my I tell you this before, I wasn't playing to my people. Mm. Because as far as I'm concerned, the music that I wanted to play was for Mossad and the people of Mossad. Because there's a there was an affinity mm. to that to the area and the people because Well that's where your following started, yeah. wasn't it? And not only that, um, I felt comfortable playing mm. in the in to my people as I call them. And when I left the arena, for some reason, it went down. Because the music's gone. And Phil begged me to come back, mm. and I went back, and I went back, and it just went back up. Till when I left. It's a mix of all. For me, it's the friends as much as the music, to be dead honest. Mm. But also, we must just like have Den of Iniquity souls. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That we all know Den of Iniquity's going on. We all turn a blind eye and just gather together. And you, I've been drawn to it though. Do you know, drawn to go and see totally. it and drawn back night after night. And I must be honest, not, not horrible things happening to anybody. But, you know, like, when something bad happened, I loved it. It's, like, exciting. I don't mean horrible, you know, like... But, you know, like, the fights and the carries on and everything, it's it. They're all part of it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I had fights as well in my side. Yeah. Oh, there was always... Someone was always wanting to fight with me. Um, Why? Oh, for various reasons, but... Um, I mean, me and Monica fought because me and Jonesy had a thing as well. Oh, it's always the same old mm. reasons, isn't it? Go on. Of course it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, me and Monica were friends in in the end, thankfully. Yeah. Because you know, she was she was a nice person, Monica. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was there was always women <laughs> fighting over men usually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, and men over women. And men over women. Yeah. Which goes with our age as well, because you wouldn't do it now, would you? But from what I've heard, one of the worst things about the arena Go on. was the ladies' toilet. Oh my god! I heard it was, <laughs> oh my god! I heard it was disgusting. It was. It was really, really, really bad. But it never got cleaned. It was, that's what I was told. It never it ever. It, it could never have got cleaned that toilet. It was a disgrace. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was bad. But it's just, you, I don't know, when you're young, I can't imagine using that toilet now. I can't imagine. But, <laughs> <laughs> but then it's just like, I need a wee, let's go toilet, get back out quick. Yeah, and it was always packed in there. Absolutely. Well, it was one well, toilet. it was only small, wasn't it, yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. The strain is very... <laughs> it's just part of the arena and its culture. A disgusting toilet. <laughs> it's going to be the arena without that toilet. Yeah, I hope it's there. <laughs> you know, when we dig it up, I hope it's there. The toilet. The toilet, mm. I hope it's there. You know, even smashed, I just hope it's there. That'd just be funny. Yeah, it'd be really funny. But you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd know exactly. Yeah, where it was. Where it was. Yeah. The drain of it will still be there. Look at this, it's making <laughs> a feel sick. The drain of it will still, even if the toilet's gone, the drain for it will still be there. There'd be no reason to take it out. Mm. Have we got anything else to say, folks? Oh, one question. Was was the Jonesy little fling behind Monica's back? Well, it it started off behind her back, but, you know, she found out about it, obviously. Oh. I mean, that went on for three years. Did it? Did. I mean, I wasn't the only one, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few of us. Pavel. Who? Pavel. Pavla. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, Pavla went on to, to have mm. kids with Jonesy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Linda. Mm. Um, That's low. He, he had, he had a, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Good time, yeah, good time, so. Look at her, <laughs> look at her face. <laughs> yeah. And See, course, there's just something in your soul that clicks in there, and we all knew who clicked in there, and we all knew who didn't. Didn't we? There's plenty of passers by, but we all know who each other is. Yeah, exactly. 
We did. Yeah. I mean, people that I, I'm not particularly, I don't, I haven't kept in touch with anybody, but I've met people like Julie Joanda. Yeah. Me and her are really good friends now. We knew of each other then days, but weren't, you know, weren't friends at all. Mm-hmm. And now years later, we're really, we're really, really good friends. Yeah, you still see her? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Julie, yeah. Definitely. Well, Linda has always been with us, hasn't she? Yeah, always. Linda. She's great. Should we shut our folks? Pass